Do you use a trip planning tool to plan out your RV trips? Well, we do, and it's called RV Trip Wizard, and today we're going to run through it and review it with you. Hi, everybody. This is Mike from RV Blogger in front of the camera, and Susan's behind the camera. And today we're going to be talking about our favorite trip planning tool called RV Trip Wizard. Now, if this is your first time visiting us on YouTube, welcome aboard. We make tons of YouTube videos, and we write hundreds of blog articles over on our website, rvblogger.com, all about RVing. So today we're going to be chatting about RV Trip Wizard. And we love the tool. We use it when we plan our trips to go RVing. And it just helps us to find and locate campgrounds and different points of interest along the way for whatever route we're going to take. Uh, it, we think it's a really fantastic tool and it has a lot of cool features with it. Now, when we first started RVing, we did not use a trip planning tool. We didn't even have a GPS. We just used Waze or Google Maps to find our way around. And what we found was they don't work. We got stuck one time during rush hour traffic at a bridge that we couldn't fit under. So that was real fun. And just going through planning trips, it was kind of frustrating because we found ourselves um, trying to locate campgrounds, for example, and we would have to hop from website to website to website to learn about a campground or a point of interest in an area where we were going and also even as far as just choosing an actual campsite you know I like to get onto Google Maps but zoom in using the satellite feature so I can see the actual campground and so like I said we just ended up jumping from website to website trying to plan where to stay when to stay how long all of that stuff and really we were hoping to find something where everything was in one place one location that was easy to use and we found that with RV Trip Wizard so what we're gonna do is a pretty basic run-through of RV Trip Wizard and some of the features that it has and how it works and we're gonna plan a little mini trip and you can just watch right over my shoulder and watch the computer screen as we go through and plan a trip together. So let's jump on the computer and get started planning our trip. Okay, so here we are on the home page for RV Trip Wizard. When you first you know, look it up or, or enter it into the Google search bar, this is the page that you'll come to. And the first thing you need to do is either sign up or log in. In my case, I just log in. Um, it will remember your information, so it's already got my email address in here. It's got my password saved. You can click remember me or not. It seems like it remembers you either way. So we'll log in. So it brings you to this screen initially. Now, the very first time that you sign up for RV Trip Wizard, what it's going to do is take you to this screen and it's going to get all of the information that you have to like set up the defaults for the program. So, for example, it really starts right here on the RV info. And what you do is you go through and you list the height of your RV. Ours happens to be 11 feet, two inches tall. The length of your RV, ours is 24 feet. The weight, fuel type, it has a drop down menu for, you know, diesel, unleaded, whatever. And then the size of your fuel tank, ours is 55 gallons. I don't have a reserve tank. And for fuel economy, we get about nine miles per gallon. Um, when I drive appropriately. And it's all about how I drive. If I drive like I drive my car, I get closer to eight. If I drive properly, I can get closer to 10. So I plug it in at nine just to be on the safe side. Um, and we are carrying propane. So you would save your default settings and then it would use this information so that, for example, it won't take you on a route that has a bridge that you can't go under or a bridge that you're too heavy for um, it'll also calculate when you need to stop for fuel and it won't take you through maybe a, a tunnel where propane is not allowed. So it uses the information to help route you on your trip. So it's very, very helpful. One of the other tabs on here that you can do is you can sort of set up like how far you'd like to drive and places that you might like to avoid. So we always try to avoid ferries because when you get to a ferry, you don't know how long you have to wait for the ferry to come along. So we try to avoid any routes that have ferries on them. and average driving speed. Um, this is, I think, with stops as well, but, you know, 
we try never to go faster than 60 miles an hour. Sometimes I do, but I put 55 in here. That's kind of a good average for us. We don't like to drive more than four hours a day. And you'll see when we go to the map, it'll draw a circumference. So you'll be able to see where four hours of driving will land you. And that will help you to plan where you might want to find a campground along the way uh, on your journey. Or you can set it up by mileage. And when you set it up or by distance, and when you set it up by distance, you know, you could make three circles, a, one, a 50, a 150, and a 300. So that's the maximum amount of miles that you'll go. Uh, I prefer to use hours driving per day because I'm not always sure if I go 300 miles, it, in some places that could take me, you know, five hours and other areas that might take me seven hours. I'm not sure. So if I'd use the hours a day, that's better for me to understand. Um, you can also click to show, it's automatically going to show a radius, but you can click if you don't want it to show a radius, but I, I prefer showing the radius. It's a very helpful tool. RV Trip Wizard can also track your expenses. Now, uh, this is very generic. It's not like accurate. You're just going to put a, a guesstimate in for these things. So you might say, you know, hey, if I get a campground, you know, that's going to run me 50 bucks a night. We might spend, you know, $25 day, a day on food. Then you have miscellaneous expenses. And then your cost per gallon of gas, you know, you might say is $2.30 right now. I don't really know. But um, you know, in my opinion, the only one of these that's going to be accurate is average cost per gallon of gasoline. So in addition to helping you plan your trip, RV Trip Wizard can also help you plan your expenses. Now, you know, we... We try to boondock as much as we can. So if we are camping, we'll typically stay at a campground if we're traveling anyway. Let's say we're traveling a long distance. We'll stay at a campground once in a while, but we might stay at a harvest host in two different locations. And then the third night, we'll stay in a campground because we know by the third day, we'll need to dump our tanks. But we don't want to pay 50 bucks a night just to sleep in a campground. So. You know, we might only do that one of every three nights. So you kind of have to, you know, for us, it might be $15 a day. But, um, you know, really, I don't use these at all. I just leave them blank. Um, I will put in the cost per gallon for gas, though, because that I do use. And then you have your memberships and preferences. And so, like you can see on the right, what, what RV Trip Wizard will do is find campgrounds based on what your preferences are. So we belong to FMCA. So, of course, we want to find those. Good Sam. We want to always stay in national parks and forests. We like staying in state parks. We also belong to Passport America, so it'll find all those campgrounds. Any BLM lands we'll know about and KOA campgrounds. Now, you can put on here to only show the preferred campgrounds. We I just leave it unchecked because then it gives you the biggest variety of all the campgrounds that are out there. Um, so, But you can check to only find these if that's what you would prefer. And then you just click Save your default settings. And that will save everything so that when you are planning your trip, it'll take everything into account. Now, we're going to go ahead and just click a new trip here. But when you first get here, you're either going to have an open trip, which, you know, means you're planning a trip actively or you're going to have new trips. I've kind of cleared everything out of here. And uh, I just have one open trip to kind of use as an example. I'll show it to you real quick. We're going to go to the RVE Summit with... Heath and Alyssa in March. And so we've I've kind of plugged that in here as kind of an example. And I'll just give you a quick overview. And for that trip, we're going to travel from Pasadena, Maryland, down to Lake Guntersville State Park in Alabama. And then we're going to head back home to Pasadena, Maryland. And so this shows the overall route that we're going to take on the way down. And then on the way back, we're going to swing through North Carolina a little bit you know, and head back to Pasadena. And it shows us the total number of miles that we're going to drive, which is 1,568. We have 10 nights of camping. And the cost is at zero right now because, I don't, you know, I don't fill in all of the information to keep track of the costs. I just, it's just an estimate anyway, and I can keep track of that stuff separately. Why don't we go ahead and, and book a new trip and we'll call this, you know, test trip one. And we're going to say that we're going to go in April. We're going to leave on Saturday the 4th. And then you just hit create. 
And you can either use your current location as your starting point. And what it'll do is just use the uh, your computer location or somewhere close to where you are. It may not be exact. It might pick an address actually that's within a mile of where you are. It might just pick the town where you live, but it'll pick something relatively close to where you are. Or you can just go ahead and put in an actual address for what your starting location is. So I'm just going to put Pasadena, Maryland. When the drop-down list occurs, it'll list the town, it'll list the county, and then it'll list the state. So when you see the drop-down, it can be a little confusing. But just remember, it shows the county in there or city in there as well. So Pasadena for us is in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. So we'll click that as our starting location. We have our name in here. Trip status is active. You can set up a pre-departure email if you like and email friends or family and send your itinerary and all that fun stuff. It's pretty cool. So that's our starting point. You can see the green flag. We're going to start off from there. And now we're going to go ahead and, and uh, plan the trip a bit. Now, let's say, for example, we're going to go to Guntersville State Park in Guntersville, Alabama. We can just type that in, click on it. And it'll show you where that is. Now, when you click on that, and you can click on more details to learn about it. Whoops. It'll pop up the campground, because it is a whole entire campground here, Guntersville State Park. You've got all these great pictures. And this is one of the things I really like about RV Trip Wizard is, you know, I don't have to go bouncing around to all these different websites, you know, to get a feel for what the campground is like or to read about the features of the campground or reviews. You know, I've got all these reviews in here that I can read about. Um, tips and Q&A, and I can even look up the weather. So in April down there, we can sort of expect a high of 72 and a low of 50, that's great. But when you first pop in the information, it'll give you the phone number and a, a link to the website, campground reviews, it'll tell you this is a pretty cheap place to stay, has 139 total sites. You know, it gives you plenty of information about it. Now, we're going to go ahead and add this to our trip, and we're going to stay there for, I don't know, let's say a total of five nights. And what happens here is add this stop after, well, I'm going to add it after we start from Pasadena, Maryland, obviously, and then I'll just add it to the trip. So now I've got sort of my starting point and my ending point located. And so what I can do is pull that out of the way and just go to this button here, show entire trip. And there you go. It'll show the trip all the way from Pasadena, Maryland to Guntersville State Park. And it shows all these campgrounds in between, which is a lot. I mean, there's, there are campgrounds everywhere. So um, it's really easy to find places along the way. This actually shows kind of backwards, but it's showing a four-hour uh, drive window from Guntersville State Park to here, and you can see the overall trip is going to take us 13 hours. So, you know, that's about a third of the way, and, you know, somewhere around this Passport America campground is probably another third of the way. So, on our drive down there, we might want to stop somewhere around here, and then stop again somewhere around here, and then we'll make it to our destination, assuming we only want to drive four hours a day. So, Let's do that. Let's go ahead and add, and we belong to Passport America, so I'm going to just go ahead and add Glen Murray Park. So I've clicked on it. Now I've got phone number, website, all this information, 52 total sites. I can check out the features. It's got pull-through sites. They have some tent camping. They have bathrooms, a dump station. That's good. Showers. Really doesn't say much about hookups, but you can read the reviews. No frills, campground, paid 19 bucks a night with their Passport America discount. That's great. Um, it's basically an open field, unshaded, grassy surface, slightly unlevel. It's all right, though. They can use their blocks and, and get it set up. It's near Natural Bridge, Virginia, and the Blue Ridge Parkway. So you can find out a lot of information by reading through the reviews. So we're going to go ahead and add this to our trip. We're only going to stay here one night. And so you have to go to the last stop button here. So we want to stop here after we leave Pasadena. So we'll click that in, and then you'll see this will show up. So we start in Pasadena, and our first stop is Glen Murray Park. Now, when I hover on it here, you can see it bouncing over here. So there you go. And now the next place we're going to stop, you know, is going to be somewhere in this vicinity. I see another Passport America campground. Again, I'm only going to stay for one night. So, you know, maybe I'll stay at the Lazy Llama campground. Again, we have a great review, 
everything is here you can really you know get a good idea of what's going on now i'm going to go ahead and add this to our trip as well so we'll stay here for one night and we want to stay here after we stay at glen Murray. so we'll put that in as the add this stop after glen Murray state park which we just added and then we'll add that in now there it is so we have the first half of our trip pretty well set right we're going to leave pasadena Stay one night here at Glen Mary in Virginia. Stay one night here at Lazy Llama in Tennessee. And then land in Lake Guntersville State Park. And we're going to stay there for five nights. I, you know, also like another feature on here. When I, when I book a campground, I really like to take a good look at it from the satellite view. And so you'll notice here that if you zoom in, but I'm going to switch over to the satellite view. And what I like to do is, you know, make sure you know, that I'm staying somewhere that, you know, doesn't have train tracks running right past the campground or doesn't have a major interstate running over the campground or, you know, anything that I think might be a deterrent to me wanting to spend the night here. Now, the Lazy Llama campground looks to me like, you know, here's a bunch of campers, backs up to some trees, looks to me like it's probably, you know, pretty decent place to stay. I don't really see anything around it that would be prohibitive about me staying here. So, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to do that. Now, the real reason I like to zoom in is because I will actually zoom in on the actual campsite, you know, stay at and pick my campsite using the satellite feature. And I've used this a ton because when I go camping, if I'm going to spend 50 bucks on a campsite and there's a stream or a river and I want to back up to it, you know, we've done this before, like it's Sequoia forests out in California. And I used my satellite feature to land us the campsite that backed right up to a waterfall. And it was gorgeous and beautiful and we got to listen to it all night. So if you're really into that sort of thing, you can use the satellite feature to zoom in and choose your individual campsites. But for now, it's just much easier to, you know, when you're planning your route, just use the map feature, obviously. So we'll zoom out of here and we'll go back and just take another look at, at the entire trip, see how we're looking so far. And there you go. Now, if you've got all these campgrounds on here, there's a button here where you can hide all the parks and just see your trip. And right now we have a Passport America bar booked here, another one here. We'll make our way down to Guntersville State Park. Then we have to plan our way back home, but you get the idea. It's very, very simple. You know, if you wanted to swing through Asheville and add another location, you just type in uh, there's some KOAs there, or you can just put the town of Asheville. Asheville, North Carolina, looks like it's in Buncombe County in North Carolina. So you can put that in for now as a waypoint. Oh, here's another Passport America campground. Um, here's a good Sam. Here's another campground, Lodge, Campfire Lodgings, has four and a half stars. French Broad River campground only has three stars. So you can you know easily check things out. Here's the Biltmore. It also shows points of interest. Um, Biltmore is a really famous um, estate. I think it was built by Thomas Jefferson. It's a really neat museum to check out. Um, another cool thing on here is you can list all your hazards or hide the hazards. And this will show you like any bridges or overpasses where, you know, you might not fit. This one's only 10 feet, 11 inches. Our RV is 11 feet too. So we can't go on this road where this bridge is. And of course, RV Trip Wizard will just route us right around all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. Now, we have we have uh, two open trips, test trip number one, RV Summit. It's pretty cool that you, you know, you now have these couple of different trips set up. We're current, we currently have this one open, but there's some, some other neat features that you can do. They have a whole feature tour that you can take, and it's a demo that they'll take you on, and you can just go through it and use every feature that they offer and kind of practice with things. And it's very, very helpful. And if you just click on your name next to it, go down to the feature tour, it'll take you on the feature tour and help you to figure all those things out. You also have filters here that you can use to find points of interest. So if you want to put all the fuel stops in, you can do that. If you want to put in rest areas, you can do that. Um, it's also got all of these stores, many of them allow you to stay overnight for free. So you have your Cracker Barrels, you've got your Flying Jays, you've got your Loves, Bass Pro Shops. Um, I think it even has, yep, Cabela's is in here, Costco is in here. And then you could even put all your Walmarts and your Super Walmarts in here. 
moose lodges, elks lodges, just everything. And then it has all these other points of interest that you can put in as well, like grocery stores, gyms, ATMs, everything you can imagine. If you're traveling with pets, it, got, it has pet stores. Um, I think it even has doctors, dentists. I mean, it's just got everything you can imagine, pharmacy locations. So you can put all these things into your map. And if you know you want to stop along the way and stay for free at a couple places, you know you can do that as well. It's got all the hazards, which are the low clearance hazards, and then of course it's got all the parks built into it as well. That's pretty much how RV Trip Wizard works. You know we think it's a pretty helpful tool that you can use to very easily figure out how to get from point A to point B, and then from there, you know you can take off and go anywhere you want and just keep adding on to the trip, or you can route yourself back home and end the trip, and then make another trip from there and go wherever you're gonna go. But the things that I like most about it are, it's very easy to find campgrounds. It's terrific because it has all of the campground information in the review. You can do the satellite feature and you know check out any campgrounds that you want. Um, you can, you know, it's got all the review stuff. So we really like that. As far as like the fuel stuff and the cost stuff goes, we just don't use that a lot. I look, you know, I know when my gas tank's gonna go empty, I, you know, I just look at the gas tank meter. And as far as capturing the cost goes, you know, we just kinda keep that stuff separately anyway. So we don't really use those parts of the program. Now, this is a web-based program and you need to use this on your computer or on a tablet. The bigger the screen, the better. It just seems to work better on the larger screens. Um, but another nice feature with this is you can link this up if you have a GPS and send the information to your GPS and it will use this info um, and find the campgrounds for you. And then um, it, it links together very nicely that way. So that's our review of RV Trip Wizard and how easy it is to use. We hope you enjoyed watching us use the the computer and just plan a little mini trip. We'll have a link in the show notes down below, or you can head on over to the website, go to our memberships page, and we'll have a link for RV Trip Wizard there as well. Now, full disclosure, if you use one of our links to purchase RV Trip Wizard at no extra cost to you, we do make a small commission on it. And that helps us to pay for all of the free, free content that we make either on the blog or on our YouTube channel for you to check out. So we hope you will check it out. And speaking of check it out, check out one of our other videos if you're interested. And when you do, we hope that you'll subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every week when we release a new YouTube video. So for Mike and Susan, we'll see you next time.